Dreams were lightning Thunder were desire This old house would have burned down A long time ago 77 WABC, welcome back to the Saturday Cafe. Laura's birthday edition. Happy birthday to me. Um, I thought it only appropriate that I gift myself with the gift of music uh, for tonight's program. And I'm just, it's an embarrassment of riches, actually. The joy um, tonight that I feel like I'm sharing with you as well between H, who is young up and coming and performing at the Gershwin Hotel next week the, on the 22nd, actually uh, Thursday night, 8 to 10. We started off the show with her and then we also heard from the Wiggles. If uh, you have kids or grandkids or uh, are about to become a grandparent or a parent, the Wiggles are going to be your go-to CDs for many years while you raise your kids. But now we uh, switch hats to something rather royal. And I'm, uh, you know, saying that uh, sort of facetiously, but however, I'm really kind of taken aback by the fact that I have an artist in-house now who is a favorite, a favorite not only in England and around the world, but to the Queen herself and uh, the Prince of Wales. So without further ado, Alfie Bow. How are you doing? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is unbelievable. So here you are, you know, <laughs> performing for the Queen of England, and you're here with little old me on my birthday. There How lucky go. do happy, I get? Happy birthday. Do you want me to sing you happy birthday like the Wiggles did? Could you? There you go. I must. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Laura. Happy birthday to you. Okay, I'm going to cry. Go. <laughs> I have goosebumps. <laughs> Thank you so much. Pleasure. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, how indulgent am I a asking you to sing for me? I am really... Uh, beclemmed right now is, is the word. Alfie Bo, uh, you have a new album out. It's called Storyteller at the Royal Albert Hall. Tell us, how, no. how did... It, it, I mean, it, Storyteller, <laughs> I'm sorry, but there was a PBS uh, concert special, yeah, which Royal was Albert. Storyteller at the Royal Albert Hall. Right. And I can't imagine what that must even be like for somebody, somebody from Britain to be singing in front of the Queen and the Prince of Wales. And all. What is this like? As an artist, do, do you kind of pinch yourself or, and hope that you don't flub? Or um, no, I think I think it's uh, it's a great honour, but there's something that goes with it. I think for every UK artist who gets the opportunity to sing for the royal family, it, it, it's um, known as a uh, command performance. They sort of command you to come and perform for them. Oh, so you don't have and a choice. <laughs> well, no, you don't really. But but it's not like you would say no. <laughs> um, um, but so you you have that attached to the performance so it's it, it, you, you are nervous obviously you, you, you set up yourself to to do a good job but the nerves kick in um but you have to add that element of regality to your performance and that and, and your and your um your frame of mind when you're going out to do it uh, it's a funny funny thing really were you nervous yeah were you <laughs> I was yeah what yeah. did you sing for her um i sang uh O Solo Mio, the Neapolitan song, which then went into um, a rendition of It's Now or Never by Elvis, the Elvis version. Oh, my goodness. So I sort of broke out of the classical side of it and started swinging the hips and singing, in, uh, doing like an Elvis-style song. And, and, then, and then we did... Um, then I did... Um, uh, what was it? Somewhere from West Side Story. Mm. On, what a beautiful song that yeah, is. On, on the balcony of Buckingham Palace, which was pretty cool. Could you just sing just like one piece of somewhere, that, that one beautiful uh, just point that makes me cry every time I hear it? Which bit's that? Really? Well, <laughs> we'll find a new way of living. We'll find a new way of living. We'll find a way of forgiving. Somewhere. 
Mm. I, I mean that. I mean that. Just how you know? I would probably sit through your entire concert and like, be like choking back tears. I mean, you you have this unbelievable mellifluous voice. You're what is called classical crossover. I mean, we've got country crossover, we've got classical crossover. What I love about the new artists today, like you, in the sense that you can do anything, but you've got this. What is it called? Operetta, or is it? Is it just classical, like almost American musical theater would be what we would call it here a, a little bit in terms of the stylized, uh, what you do with your voice? Um, I, I don't do anything with different with my voice than sing with the sound I've got. I don't sort of change it for the style of music I'm singing. I mean, what's your, what's your opinion of, of crossover? What does it mean to you? Crossover. Well, like Josh Groban reminds me of, a, he would be classical cross. He sounds like he's got a bit of opera, you know, in his background and the way he presents his music. He's not singing it like, you know, a rock so, star. So are you saying that crossover is basically being able to sing classical music and then crossing over into pop music and rock music? Exactly. I see it completely different. Really? Yeah. Tell me. Um, crossover for me is, is something very, very different. Um, and it's it's a, it's it's a strange that it's got this connotation that it's that it's about being able to sing an operatic aria, and then a rock song, and then a pop song or a musical theatre. I don't see any difference or any division between genres in music. Mm. I don't see a difference between Mozart and Keith Richards. These guys are composers. These guys are writers of songs. They're writers of music. It's the same old notes that have been used for centuries, just put in a different order. Mm -hmm. Music is music. Music is one huge world. Um, the only difference that I see with crossover, and the only, the only thing I relate to crossover, is being able to cross over the audiences. Um, you get an audience who like classical music, and you get an audience who like rock music, and pop music, and musical theatre, and jazz, and blues, and gospel, and soul all these different audiences who like different types of music you have to mix them together they're the right. people that you have to cross over to to so if you're singing to a a pop crowd or a rock crowd you have the opportunity to present them with a classical song and you can right. all and, and 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 a lot of the time their reaction to that is is amazing because they don't expect it and they and it's something that they haven't really um had the opportunity of experiencing the same as a as a classical audience when i sing something like blues to them or or, or rock they'll appreciate it because i'm still using the vo the same voice i don't change my voice for the certain genre of music that I'm singing. Right, but crossover in terms of audience, that's what we call it here when you've got like a Carrie Underwood who's a country star but she's played on the light music stations. The people who are listening are able, she's able to reach a broader audience than just country. She's able to reach a, yeah. a, a, a yeah. real well, broad that, spectrum. That, that is the direction. It's not about the music, it's about the right. audience. It's yeah. about the audiences and how yeah. they receive it. So yes, well put. I ab That's absolutely Excuse me. Absolutely true. Um, how was Joe's Pub? You did. I love that. That is the most beautiful. I love everything that's done at Joe's Pub. Is great. Yeah, it was an amazing night. In fact, that was a great example of a, of a of a mixture of different people from all different parts of the musical spectrum. Beautiful. Um, my, I had people that knew me for singing La Boheme on Broadway, the classical opera. I had people there that knew me for Les Misérables, and I had people there that 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 know me for my um, rock and blues. Interesting. And, and, and they were all appreciative of, of, of every little bit of music that I put out. I did blues, I did music theatre, I did a little bit of classical and, and some soul and everything. So, it was, yeah, it was a, a nice mixture. But, it, but They it, just but love you. Yeah, well, it, I think it's my voice that, 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 that sort of blends the, the world together, you know, that world of music together. I don't change the sound. You know, l Robert Plant never changed his sound, and he's done so many different types of, of music, different mm -hmm. styles. Um, Elvis, the same. Frank Sinatra. They only they use the one voice that they've been given. They don't try and be an opera singer. They don't try and be a a, a, a blues singer or anything like that. They they just concentrate on what they 
on what their voice can produce. My guest is Alfie Bo. He is uh, really a world, cla- not world class, but world renowned singer. And he's here in the States and also uh, debuting his new album called Storyteller. Just came out last week. His previous album, Bring Him Home, debuted at number one on Billboard's classical crossover chart. That's what it was called. Um, but uh, the new Storyteller is more on the rootsy side. And we're going to play you some of that. He's got hits like uh, Simon and Garfunkel's Bridge Over Trouble. Water, the Rolling Stone Classics, Angie, and Shine a Light, Elvis Presley, which I can't believe, I can't believe that Elvis Presley, 36 years ago, as of yesterday, he died. It, it seems almost impossible, but when we come back, we're celebrating music today because we're celebrating my birthday. You're in the Saturday Night Cafe with Laura Smith. We'll be right back after this. More with Alfie Bow. Don't go away. <laughs> 